You are watching TFI. <laughs> Greetings. Welcome to the conclusion video for Infusion CAD Challenge number one. Thank you so much to everyone who entered. Uh, we had tons and tons of entrants. Most were incorrect, but many had succeeded. And indeed, here is the completed part in Autodesk Inventor. And then here is the completed part in Fusion 360. It is indeed possible to complete it in Fusion 360. And the answer is... Uh, did you get it right or wrong, mate? Let's go over to the properties, the physical tab. And the mass was 0 0.136 kilograms. Area was 27110.512, with the volume being 17027.126. If you managed to get that, congratulations. I'll be announcing everyone who got it right in just a short second. Let's hop on over to Fusion 360 and do the same on this component over to the properties. And we have the mass of 136 grams, which is obviously 0 0.136 kilograms, area 27110.512, with the volume 17027.126, exactly the same as Autodesk Inventor. Uh, but before we get into how it was modeled, I did promise that I'd mention everyone by name who got it right, uh, and more people got it right than I actually first anticipated, mate. So I'm gonna <laughs> go through this as fast as I can. Uh, so we have Patrick Gamba. I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher some of these names, mate. <laughs> I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie. Patrick Gamba. We have Owen Buick, Christian Alto, Josh Menier, Peter Lalman, Janita Marie, Fernando Carniel Barlin, Mike Wilfer, John Hislop, Dirk Hoflick, Alfie English, Michael Lack, Brendan Brian, Adolf Valsek, Craig Ashman, Hans Magnus Dalsrud, Martin. Co Cotier, I'm sorry, Pedro Afonso, Carl Barker, Luke Mihilchek, Daniel Pereira, Tyler Newcomb, Arsenai, The Majestic Magnificent Inv Mysterio, Mark Jones, Alan Morell, Robert Benjamins, Dutt Thakar, Fabio Tesaro, Jonathan Stokes, Will Owens, Peter Doring, Matthias Sanger, Kurt Wienheimer, Quinn Bryce Kennedy, Nate Faringer, Gerben Swart, Andre Matusek, I'm sorry. Yanis <laughs> Papst, Chris Daybeck, Thomas Pesk, Kirk Davenport, Walter, Dean K Kickenbrand, Kitchenbrand, K K uh, yeah. Tristan Cliff, Lawrence Cuthbert, and Tom's Balodis. I apologize sincerely for butchering nearly everyone's name there, but <laughs> if I got them wrong as well. Uh, I, I did I did try. Thank you to everyone else who entered. Good luck with Infusion Challenge number two, which is coming on Friday. And here's how it was done in both Inventor and Fusion 360. So let's get cracking, mate. We're gonna go with Fusion 360 first because it takes the longest to do in Fusion 360. Uh, and this is extremely difficult. Well done to anybody that managed to do this in Fusion 360 because it's difficult. Honestly, when I started doing this, I had absolutely no idea this was even possible to do. In Fusion 360, the challenge was explicitly designed for Inventor. So it took me a couple of weeks to figure out this workflow, but it is indeed possible. And well done to anyone who came up with this, or better, because I'm not convinced actually that this is even the right workflow. Um, Fusion's not my forte, although it's very closely linked to Inventor. It's very, very similar. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of Fusion really, so uh, I don't feel like I'm qualified to offer best practice guidance for Fusion. So um, I'm up for being told there's other ways of doing something, but just be mindful that us YouTubers, once we've released a video, we forgot about it already like a minute after it's been uploaded and we're on to the next thing. It's just one of those things, you know, people, it's it's nice you get comments on your videos and stuff, but when people comment on something that's like four years old and like, oh, it, Two minutes and three seconds you should have done this i'm like may i've absolutely no idea what you're talking about honestly don't you really don't care at this point it was four years ago so <laughs> forgot about it five minutes after i uploaded it if i'm honest right uh, we're going to extrude through this phase here and we're going to go with a sketch here i mean that's not true in all cases to be honest like it's just when it's a four-year-old video it mostly is you know think of something you did four years ago and if someone was to just out of the blue that you never met was to be like uh when you did that thing four years ago that was 20 minutes long uh, at the 11 minute mark you should have done this 
Are you are you really are you really gonna give a toot? Probably not. You know, are you even gonna remember what that person was on about? Probably not. Why have I exited the sketch? I didn't want to exit the sketch right back into here. I should really concentrate on this and stop telling random stories that mean absolutely nothing to anyone. Uh, direction that direction. Right, I'm not entirely sure with fusion whether you can pattern two objects in two different directions, so I'm not even going to try. So we're going to go eight symmetrical and then just redo the rectangular pattern. It's a hell of a lot easier than figuring out whether it'll work the other way. Did I want to pick that line? I didn't want to pick that line. I wanted to pick that one there. Why does the box look different? Why is the box changed? Why is it shrunken? I'm so confused. I don't Never mind, right? 19, I think. Spacing of 6.5. Going in both directions. Okay. Finish that sketch. There we go. Right, so this is the foundation for our web. Because we're going to web all of these patterned entities. And they're going to be webbed thickness of 1 mil. And uh, Autodesk, dear Autodesk, I found a bug in your program, which is quite surprising given how, how much of a primary function this is. I would, I'd expect bugs if you sort of sat in New Zealand using a, a French operating system with a Chinese keyboard. That kind of obscure scenario, but in such a primary command. You notice how I've got depth selected there. Well, there's no depth option. There's no depth value here. Well, what you've got to do, you've got to go to two next, back to depth, and then it appears. Really? Never mind, never mind. Uh, two mil depth, one mil thickness. Okay on that. Right, and then we're going to sketch the the boundary, which is going to be a school oh, lag much. Right, and then we're going to rectangle rectangle from there to there, and then offset it by negative one. Okay on that. Finish that sketch. Extrude that by distance of one. Okay, on that, right, flip it around, sketch on that face, rinse and repeat, rectangle from that corner up to that corner. I'm kind of hoping that it's automatically projecting the points that I'm snapping to. Uh, I've got snap to grid turned on, so I think I'm fine regardless. But I'm kind of banking on it, having projected that up automatically. Right, uh, this was a 1.5 extrusion, I believe, and it should be a join as well, so we still should just have one body. Yep. Right, okay, so that's all that done. That's all good. I think that's that bit done, mate. Right, so fill it. And we can now start filleting these edges, and there's quite a few of them to pick, and they're very small edges, so they're a bit fiddly. But this is the deep joy of a 3D mouse, mate. If you don't have a 3D mouse, or a space traveler, or a 3D mouse, and space navigator, whatever you want to call them, you, need, you, you really need to think about it, mate, because they're awesome. Save you so much time messing about with orbit buttons and pan buttons and moving your hand on and off the keyboard you just you've always got your left hand on your 3d mouse and it's just it's just a joy right so all of those edges are five mil and then we're going to add another selection set to these inside corners or these inside edges pick them all up and then they're going to be four mil so all of the fillets done in one operation. There we go, all done. Right, modify chamfer, which is hanging off the menu for some reason. And then we're gonna pick up these two edges here and chamfer those at a distance of 0.5. Right then, okay. That was the easy bit, mate. The next bit took me ages to figure out. Happy to be told there's another way of doing this, but this was after going through absolutely everything. It was the only way I could figure out how to do this. So, uh, also I've managed to, I've managed to, it's best, best practice really, which is something I can't say. I've modeled all of this around the center point so everything is symmetrical, so my planes intersect through the center of the model. So that there's the center line, X and the YZ is the center line. We're gonna need that because we're gonna go into a split body. We're gonna split that body and the split tool is gonna be, we're gonna use that one to start with. And get a big nice circle for some reason. And that's split. It did two bodies and we're going to repeat this. We're going to split both of these. And the split tool is going to be that one there. And then that splits it into four quadrants. And then what I want to do is grab 
that one there, and I'm going to rename. You don't have to do this bit, but I'm just going to rename this to main quadrant, just so I know which one's the one that I'm working with. Drag that up to the top, and then turn off these other ones. Right then, this bit's a bit funky, so we're going to sketch on this face here. What? Oh come on, order desk, really though? Why have you just flipped that around? Did not want you to do that. It's not logical. Right, line across here by 20 mil ish. So this bit here is just a flat face that I'm going to use uh, for a, a future function. And then three point arc down to here, automatically get that tangent constraint there. Right, ooh, now you right clicked and done there. That was a redo. And you've got to make sure that the base origin point is this corner point here. That's really important, that bit as well. And then dimension this arc by 200. Finish that. We're going to jump into the sheet metal tools. We're going to modify the style. Make sure that the stainless steel style, stainless steel style, is default, and the K factor has to be 0.5, which means the K factor is exactly halfway through the material. Really important that bit. That screwed me up for quite some time. But I figured out what I was doing wrong. And it was that. So we're going to flange that bit out, and it's got to be symmetrical. So the center of the material is in line with that reference point there. That's really important to that bit. Distance doesn't matter. It can be as far or as short as you want. And the length of the arc doesn't matter either. Okay, on that. All right then. And what I'm going to do as well, because the shadow hanging off of the side is getting on my nerves, I'm going to set the current view as front. Just so it's... Uh, and the shadow's just decided to disappear. Never mind. Right, back in the sheet metal, and we're going to unfold that flat face, unbend that, we're going to come into the solid tools and we're going to combine that with that and that gives us an entire sheet metal body so it converts our quadrant into a sheet metal part fused with this uh, flange here. I'm going to jump back into the sheet metal tools and then refold everything and it bends it with it. That's nice. It's quite satisfying when that happens. Uh, but it's very it's a very strange workflow, but it does seem to work right. And then this bit here, which is this flange, is essentially just construction geometry. It was created purely in the interests and for the purposes of bending the quadrant. And I can just delete all those faces. It would be nice if Fusion had like inventors got like a delete lump or void tool, but it doesn't. But um, never mind. Right, we're gonna sketch on that face there. The base origin point is correct. It's there. Good. Right. So we're gonna line out from here by 20 mil. Same again. That can be as long or as short as you want. Arc three points from here down to here. Get that tangent constraint. There it is. And then we're going to oh, nearly right clicked and done again. Right. Dimension on this arc, which is oh, hello shadow. Welcome back. The rebel shadow 300 mil and then finish that sketch. Similarly back into the flange tool. He said flange. And then we're going to come out by distance that doesn't matter what does matter though is the thickness needs to be symmetrical so the middle of the material is in line with that reference point okay on that and then we're going to unfold flat point bend okay into the solid tools and then combine that in that quadrant which converts the quadrant into a sheet metal part again fuses it with the the flange we're going to come back into sheet metal and then refold the faces and then whack Oh, it's nice when that happens. Really nice. Really nice. Right, back into the delete. Delete that, that. All of these faces again. It would go a lot quicker if I had a delete lump or void utility, but ah, nuts. Picked up the wrong edge. Unselect that. Delete, delete. I think that's everything. And just do a quick scan and pan. Right, okay. A pan and scan. Never mind. Okay, I think that's all we need. So that's our first quadrant done. You probably know where I'm going with this. We're going to jump into the creation tools. We're going to mirror a body. That one there. The mirror plane is going to be its own face. And then we're going to combine that and that. And then we're going to jump back into mirror. And then mirror that around again its own face, which is that. And then, mate, that's it. Almost done. One last combine. Those two bodies are out. Come on, pick up. There we are. And there we go. All right. So one last thing that I need to do is create a new component, and then use boundary fill to harp all this off into its own 
uh, component so I can isolate it away from the rest of the bodies because if you were to query the mass of that part there because that bent body is in the same component as the other three quadrants those three quadrants then contribute to the weight so I just need to harp all this off into its own component which is that there and then we need to go in to modify the physical materials where I need to give it a sheet metal uh, material which is stainless steel there it is drag that under that mate we're done that is it that's how you do it in fusion 360 right click on the component after you close that down and go to the properties and you'll find you have your 27110.512 mass of 136.217 grams and a volume of 17027.126 millimeters cubed that is correct and that's how you boss the fuck out of in Fusion Challenge number one with Fusion 360. And over to and welcome to Inventor, where the, uh, the, the challenge was designed in Inventor, so this isn't going to take long. Uh, the tools that are available in Inventor to do this challenge, unfortunately, aren't available in Fusion 360, and the challenge was indeed designed for Inventor. <laughs> so, this isn't going to take long. Uh, the drawing as well, which I created, was explicit. Why do you zoom in like that, Autodesk, when I finish the sketch? Uh, the, yeah, the, the drawing was explicitly also designed with Inventor in mind. So anyone modeling it in Inventor had a, a bit of a visual guide. There was a few cues in the drawing which kind of hinted how to do this in Inventor. Whereas Fusion was a little bit, a little bit, a lot more tricky. Right, so this one was 130 by... But there's a lot of similarities. I'm getting all these dimensions wrong. I don't know why I've just done it in Fusion. There's a lot of similarities between Inventor and Fusion, but later on in the challenge you'll see how things separate quite dramatically. So, pattern here, 20 items, spacing 6.5, and then similarly here, no, not that point, you know, uh, rectangular pattern, that line there, direction down, flippies, 10 spaced over 8 millimeters. Okay, right, then we're going to finish this sketch, and this is where Inventor starts to leapfrog Fusion with functionality, uh, well, specifically for this challenge. So what you want to do is right-click on your panel, and you want to enable the plastic part panel, which is up here, and we're going to grill uh, with a boundary here, ribs, which is like the, the web function in Fusion, but it's just extended into a more fuller command in Inventor. So we're going to rib that boundary, right, the dimensions were, oh, God knows, uh, I think this one's five. I think it's raised one mil up off the top. And the ribs are one mil wide, two mil deep. And then this here is one as well, I think. I think I've got that right ish, roughly. If it's not, I can come back and edit it, but I'd look a bit of a, an idiot if it's wrong. I think that's right. So we'll just. Do a couple of sanity checks here. So this should be two mil, which it is. And then this one here should be one mil, which it is. Yep, that's right. Okay, we're good. So that's it done, mate. Couple of clicks and you've got your entire you've got your entire plastic grill done in one go. Which is what the drone was kind of gauged around. So fillets, we can do this all in one, just like we did in Fusion. And we're gonna pick all these four corners. Uh, well done to anybody as well who managed to get this done in Inventor in the same number of features as I did, which was six. Six features you can have this entire part done in Inventor. Obviously, in Fusion 360, it was significantly more than that, but and that's 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 no negative uh, impression with Fusion, though. That's just because the challenge was actually designed in Inventor. And uh, Fusion doesn't have the same tool sets. Right, so these ones all are 5 mil, And then add another selection set, which is going to be 4 mil. Pick your little pencil for whatever reason, which is one of those things that's uh, a legacy thing with Inventor. You've got to pick the little pencil when you're picking your fillet edges. There you go, 4 mil. Okay, boom. All the fillets done in one sitting. And finally, chamfer. So this is your uh, next feature, 0 0.5 on the distance, and both those edges. Uh, Fusion 360 users, this is probably gonna hurt. <laughs> but think about what I had to do in Fusion 360 and what I've got to do in Inventor, which is to just sketch on this top face here, 
and then we're going to create two bend lines don't have to create flanges don't have to create anything in sheet metal in fact there's nothing sheet metal in this part at all uh, i don't have to create i noticed in quite a few people's in fact everybody's part that's done it in inventor uh, you did the full bend line from side to side you don't actually have to do that it doesn't matter really but you don't have to and then we're going to drop down the modify panel go into bend part and we're going to start with this line first and the the bend order does actually matter. I was going to leave that in as a bit of a gotcha, which I kind of did, but I've added a dimension in the drawing just because I think a lot of people got caught out with it. And yeah, it's the first challenge. I didn't want to be too brutal with the first challenge, but there was a bit of a gotcha. And yeah, the bend line or the bend order does matter. So we're going to go for a radius of 200 for this one. And this is just invented. It tries to solve the bend with 20 mil first, and then it does it with 200 mil afterwards, which is not very optimal it should wait until you finish typing before it tries to calculate the preview but never mind and the angle i got a couple of emails from people saying you don't specify the angle it doesn't matter the angle really doesn't matter i'm not going to type it in because it'll try solving but you could type in any angle here and it won't matter the challenge has been designed so that the radius uh, overrides the angle so okay on that and then that will bend our part around this line here with a radius of 200 mil and there we go and then what you do, mate, is you just share your sketch. That was consumed by the bend feature. Reactivate the bend part command. Pick that line, the second line, and then we can do the radius of 300 mil for this one. Same, exactly the same parameters, symmetrical sides, same direction, and then okay on that. And then that is the part finished in six features in Autodesk Inventor. And then we can go to the material and set this as stainless steel which indeed it is, turn off the shared sketch, go into our properties and you'll see exactly the same physical features as Fusion 360, which is 27110.512, volume of 17027.126 with a mass of 136 grams or 0 0.136 kilograms, mate, that's it. Infusion challenge number one, reproduced in Fusion 360 and Autodesk Inventor. And there you go, mate, that's how it was done. Infusion challenge number one, wrapped up and complete. Again, congratulations to everyone who got it right commiserations to those that got it wrong better luck next time but hopefully once you've seen how it's done you can learn a little bit from it i had a few people asking me as well if that can share the file after the challenge is done and yes i will be doing that there'll be a link in the description to the file that you can download uh the chat the, the, ch the issue that i've got is that inventor isn't backwards compatible so i can only really share it with uh, with inventor's latest file format which as of today is inventor 2020 uh, i'll put a step file there as well not that that's really going to do much good because it won't have features inside it uh, but i'll put one there nonetheless and then you can take a look at it thank you very much that's it for infusion challenge 001 challenge 2 coming later on this week if you're watching this in the future you'll see that after this video in my channel video list do get subscribed if you enjoy this sort of thing my channel is jam-packed with inventor and fusion 360 and all kinds of 3d card and hardware advice for the card professional if you like that kind of thing and that's going to do you some good mate then do get subscribed to the channel put on the notifications and if you really love that sort of stuff and you want me to carry on doing it on into the future then my patreon page is there ready and waiting for your glorious support thank you very much and i'll see you next time. Toodles!